low riding to me is when you buy a car, an old car, and you fix it up and you fix it up the way you want to. You change the look of it, the style of it. It's about you. You changing that car and making it look the baddest you can make it look. I have a 1949 four-door Chevy Deluxe. Two-tone, tan and white, had the bumpers re-chromed. I got two-inch uh, white walls, radials, still have the original hubcaps on there. I have a 235 six-cylinder. It came out of a 53 Chevy Bel Air. So my accessories are bumper wraps. I bought a swamp cooler for it, a visor. Uh, I've also got little wing vent deflectors. They're red. And the reason why I bought red is because the hood ornament's red. I also have an accessory where you could put flags on it. So if you're going to parades or just cruising around, you could put your flags on the flag stem there and just show them off. The postery that was in the car was original, but it was all torn, worn out from the weather. When I priced out the postery job to have somebody do it, we were looking close to $2,000. So I found this class in Sacramento and I learned how to do a postery and I did it all myself. The door panels, the seats, everything, the carpet, everything I did myself. I probably spent maybe under $300 to do all my upholstery work. I used to buy this newspaper out of Lodi, California. I saw this car for $1,600. So I told my dad, hey, let's go look at this car. It was all there complete. So we loaded up on a trailer and brought it back and I started making phone calls to my cousins that already been involved in low riding and building their own cars. And I was telling them that I had uh, some stainless that had dents in it. You know, I want to fix up the stainless and get it shiny. He goes, you got to go to the swap meet and, and buy all the tools, all the buffing wheels, and you got to make your own tools to take out dents. So I did that. I buffed out and took out all the dents, buffed everything out to almost brand new and put everything back on the car the way it originally went. So I did all the stainless myself. I love the way just the body style on the outside looks. All the chrome, all the stainless, just shiny. It just brings out the, the look of the old car. When I'm driving my car around, people are yelling out, oh, I love your car, it brings back memories. They give me a thumbs up. It makes me feel good. It makes me feel proud that I did all the work myself. I was born in Sacramento, California, raised out in the country. My father was born and raised in Porterville, California. He had four brothers and four sisters. So he grew up in a big family. He was a hard worker. Somehow he ended up in Stockton where he met my mom at a dance. So they started dating. They got married in Stockton, California and started a family. And my dad found a job out in the fields on a ranch working in the tomatoes. And my mom was working in the tomatoes at that time. And then eventually got a state job in Sacramento. At that time, it was me, my brother, and my sister. Eventually, when we got older, we started working out in the fields. We were, we were all close. My father wanted to stay in the country because he didn't want to screw up in the city of all the violence and all the gangs that are going on. He wanted us away from that. So we've been country, a country family all our lives. I, I take a lot of pride in my car. I like to go cruise around the town of Galt or Lodi or Sacramento. I like to go where there's a lot of people. People are just looking at the car, taking pictures, pointing. You know, little kids coming out and they're jumping. Oh, wow, you know, look, mom, look, dad, look at that. There goes that, look at that old car. Makes me feel good. I belong to Classic Dreams. It started in 1973. My cousin Danny Rodriguez started it. Yeah, we, I, I get the family together. 
I like getting everybody together because it lowers the car more, so all the kids are in the back. <laughs> the love of low riding, it's getting passed on to my kids. Eventually, they'll get involved slowly, but it's there. It's been exposed to them. Sometimes the kids want to take it out for a cruise, and I'm kind of itchy about that. But once in a great while, I'll let my two sons drive it. Once in a while, not all the time. I work for a company called Sheldon Gas. I drive truck, deliver gas, sales, I do service. And there's times that I help out the community. I've been a volunteer fireman for about 19, 20 years. I'm still active. We don't get paid like a full-time fire department, but we do do the same training as a full-time fire department. The difference between a volunteer fire department is we're constantly running on calls around the clock. We have the same resources that full-time fire department has, and we have brand new equipment just like a paid department does, but we get our equipment through grants. There's 70% volunteer fire departments in the United States. That's why we apply for grants. It's just the budget is not there for us in that community to have a full-time fire department. Well, the first call that I went on to was a, a structure fire. It was a trailer that caught fire that somebody was living in. I didn't really do much because I was still new. And being there, uh, you know, the people were coming out, thank you, thank you, you know. That got me hooked right there. I love being a firefighter. That, that was my calling, to help people and be there. There was one call. Me and my wife were coming home with the kids from town. And I was watching the news. They said, oh, a car went in the river. I said to my older brother, Manuel, I said, hey, I think uh, Julie and the kids went in the river. And he jumped up and he said, no. So he, he drove down there. He found a piece of a fender wall inside that he uh, bought for the car. It was him. And it was just heart crushing. So two days, two days um, went by. They still haven't found him. Finally, I, I looked at, at her family, Julie's family. I said, you guys got to get my brother. You got to get him out of here. Because he was showing up every day. You know, he had his two kids in there and his wife. So uh, the dive team went in there, and they, couldn't, they, had a hard, they had a hard time finding that car. We had a close friend. He owned his tow yard, and he had his own diver. So I went in there, and he, I said, hey, Jay, can you, uh, can you please get your diver out there? So he sent his diver out there, and he found him. So he came back up, took his air tank off, and marked it. They brought each one, one by one, out of the car and laid them on the riverbank. Uh, the little girl was still in her car seat. Uh, the little boy, he didn't have his seatbelt on. We don't know if he was trying to get out or not. Uh, the mother was up front. My wife had to go identify him because I, I couldn't. Really hard on both families. Hardest on my brother. He's not the same anymore, but he's managed to get through it. I know stuff like this happens to not only our families, but there's a lot of families all over. The way I cope with it is by talking about it. It all calls helped me out a lot and changed me. I could take that experience that I have and, and, and share it with somebody else and maybe it would help them. The best medicine for any tragedy that happens to anybody is to talk about it. Because if you don't talk about it, it'll eat you up inside. You have to talk about it. My family keeps me going. My brothers, my sisters, my mom and dad, 
Even though I know my dad isn't here, I still think about him. It keeps me going because he liked what I did. People that are still trying to find out what their calling is, if there's something you want to do, go out and do it. To me, everything is still new. My firefighting, I'm still learning. It's my calling to help out the people. I like the return I get in it from my fire brothers or my captains, my chief, my commissioners. In 1996, I got awarded uh, Fireman of the Year and eventually became a captain. And that inspired me to be more involved to help out new members that are joining. I feel if I help somebody in return, eventually somebody will help out me. Good things turn around and eventually it'll come back to me. My purpose is to be there to help people and comfort people if they need it, to talk to them, to let them know that it's going to be okay. I'm just going to keep going until I can't go anymore because I love helping people out. My name is Butch Rodriguez. I'm a volunteer firefighter and I'm a lowrider role model.